Joining us today is Ty Nguyen, an innovation leader with Hensel Phelps, the construction management and GC firm that recently launched Diverge, an investment company specializing in construction innovation and technology. Welcome, Ty. Thank you, Jen, for having me. Ty, in terms of working with innovation partners and tech startups, how will Diverge be different from what Hansel Phelps has been doing in the last decade? You know, I think as the, uh, the heart of Diverge and really one of our mission statements is to uh, continue um, fostering this partnership, I think, in industry. You know, I think the difference today, you know, I think when I first started 17 years ago, it's the industry wasn't really... Uh, good about collaborating, collaborating and sharing. And I think today, uh, where I think Diverge is going to definitely try to make a difference is we want to make sure we are collaborating and partnering, right? And it starts with, you know, the, the, the VC groups out there and then startups as well, because that's who we're fostering through this development cycle of, you know, bringing in solutions and um, giving them access to our people, our processes and a lot of our projects, right? And allowing their products to grow naturally and, and become uh, could, you know, become more of an impact for, for the industry. You know, so within that, owners are very important to us today as well. We want to make sure that we're, you know, working with them strategically to understand what their needs are. And so as we're, you know, building their facilities, we're also looking at their long-term innovation goals as well. Uh, and then within that, our trade partners, right? That's very important to everything that we do. So making sure that we have a voice uh, from them and understand and get insights from them and our a &E partners. So, you know, in general, just, you know, a lot of partnering this, you know, I think with this um, effort and Diverge is going to be at the central kind of, you know, facilitating and, and fostering those partnerships and relationships. Well, that's great. Let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of Diverge. Um, how many people in Hensel Phelps are involved in it? Uh, and what's your vetting process in terms of uh, requiring applicants for uh, to in terms of their evaluation and approval yeah so there's four dedicated resources to diverge i have a very small team but agile right and so within <laughs> that I'm leading the group uh, i've got uh, richard lopez uh in my team as well um siavash mosini and mihir selamar and and really i think with this group we are leveraging on the masses meaning that you know, my group will be focused and keeping our eye on the ball. And really, you know, the concept behind that is also leveraging on 4,000 plus employees at Hensel Phelps to kind of be the boots on the ground, give us insights, right? Allowing us to kind of, you know, maneuver and strategize, uh, putting Hensel Phelps in really a strategic position, you know, I think, within some of these startups and these innovations. Uh, within that, obviously, you know, the network grows as well. Uh, outside of that, our network is, you know, today I work with so many different VCs and, you know, there's about 6,000 startups in the construction yeah. space, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and then, you know, within that, again, my, my, my counterparts around the country with, you know, competing firms, I think, again, that, that to me has just been amazing in the last handful of years, the ability to collaborate with them and share notes. Um, and so what does our, our process look like? You know, so with any startup, whether it's a referral from a venture capital group or if it's from one of my counterparts at a different company, uh, and most importantly, a lot of it comes from internally with, you know, our people at Hensel Phelps. Uh, we take the, uh, the startups or that idea, uh, and then we go and have a discovery, making sure that we understand, you know, really kind of who the co-founder is or who the founders are mm -hmm. uh, with that, you know, financially how they're built and their solution, right? What is their MVP? And within that, does it, is it a right fit for Hensel Phelps? And, and so I think going through all those checks and balances up front, we start to kind of set up structure. Uh, we put them through the process after that. And we go and we um, talk to our, you know, again, our SMEs internally, uh, whether it's, a, you know, something that uh, focuses in the field, it's an office type of product. So we write the, bring the right content experts into that conversation. And then within that, I think as we start to understand, yes, this could be a value to really some of our needs, uh, we try to find a pilot project, right? And again, um, those aren't overnight. It takes time to find, again, the right people to support the pilot, the right project, the right contract. Um, it's got to be a perfect scenario, really, because we want to make sure we set up that startup to succeed. Uh, we want to make sure we put the, um, you know, the sweat equity behind it, again, to give them that value. And, and again, it, it goes both ways, right? Because then if, if we put in that effort, it, it provides a great product for us. Um, once we get into a pilot phase, we start to do the R analysis on it, understanding really feedback at the job site level, the end users, putting criteria in terms of how we're going to um, really grade the solution. Uh, and then as it starts to groundswell and we're starting to see it starting to, you know, not 
be, uh, be more effective than just on one job. We start to see two jobs using it, and then you know one district, and then eight districts. We start to understand. Okay, it's going to have uh, some potential to scale. At that time, we will take a look at it from an enterprise level agreement, and then within that, does it make sense to invest in this group? And if it does, we will consider investing financially into this group, and then continue that growth uh, and making that product better. Uh, speaking of investment, what is Pencil Phelps's financial commitment to Diverge in its first year? You know, I, with Diverge in its first year, you know, we've uh, invested a lot in terms of our people's time. So it's quite equity in terms of, you know, standing up, putting structure to it, bringing in uh, a focus team, standing up a focus team, spinning out a uh, an actual company, uh, Diverge, which is a Hansel Phelps company. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think the investment is, um, you know, a, a commitment from leadership that they want to continue to invest in the construction space and you know really uh, support Hensel Phelps as we try to innovate. Um, that investment, I, I would say, if you had to put a value to it, is you know definitely north of of, of millions. So. Mm -hmm. There are all, as you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of incubators, a lot of accelerators out there in the context space. Uh, how is Diverge going to be different so that you're attracting the type of startups you're interested in? You know, so within that concept, and you're to your point, yes, you know, I think in the last six months, we think we looked at 300 different startups. And, you know, I think our honesty and transparency up front uh, is going to be different, right? We're not going to sign on and, and, and want, you know, to be part of a startup unless we feel that we can add value to that startup, right? It's not just checking the box and being a silent partner. We want to make sure that if we are going to commit to any startup, that we're going to give you access again to our people, our processes, our projects, and then feedback, right? Because um, I think that's very important to any startup. I think just investing in them and just giving them, um, you know, again, a monetary uh, uh, um, injection, there's value to that, obviously. But I think our part, we realize that it's more in terms of how we can grow that product within our space and then our feedback from our people. Because I feel that's priceless at that, at that boots on the ground level to give them that type of you know, and then, you know, I always warn with any startup that there's always going to be scope creep. Any solution that you bring into the space <laughs> is your solution and they want to make it do everything. Right. And so also making sure that we understand really the roadmap of these startups and these founders, uh, not giving them scope creep, not overwhelming them, keeping them agile and truly delivering what their vision was on day one. Scope creep. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <A lot>. um, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, on one hand, Hensel Phelps wants to be an industry disruptor. And on the other hand, it wants to influence technology that would be specific to your business business's needs. Is your company looking to get on the ground floor with innovations that will ultimately be proprietary? Or are you planning to share the innovations with the rest of the industry? You know, I think our intent is to share. I think our intent as Diverge is to make the industry better. And again, I think I, I, I go back to that earlier um, a comment I made made today, you know, again, a decade ago, it's really about, you know, uh, being secretive about what you're using and how you're using it. But today, I feel the only way this industry gets better because it's so fragmented is that we need to share. Uh, we need to share lessons learned, best practices, and really within that help not only, you know, Hensel Phelps, but um, our owners, our trade partners, our A&E partners, and, you know, our competing competing firms as well out there, because if they get behind these innovations, right, it's just going to make that innovation that much better. Um, and so end of the day, it's really about sharing and it's about making industry better. And uh, we're absolutely uh, driving to do that. Mm -hmm. And lastly, Ty, can you give me a couple of examples of where Hensel Phelps might benefit near term from Diverge? I mean, is there any particular type of innovation or technology that you're targeting right now uh, for specific near-term needs? Yeah, so there's so many, you know, I think in it's holistic, it's the entire workflow. It starts as early as when we start to chase work, right, with our business development teams into estimating procurement um, and through the life of construction. <clears throat> and most importantly these days, it's really partnering with owners, right, to understand how we can take a lot of what we do during construction, <clears throat> excuse me, and transition it to them, allowing them to better leverage that data to manage their facilities. And so, again, it's that whole holistic workflow. So examples right off the bat for us initially in this first, um, you know, year of really standing up Diverge, it's been 
collaboration. I think for us, um, for the first time, we've got a, a tremendous vehicle that allows us to communicate internally, uh, be really transparent from district to district, um, have these solutions, giving them sustainability, because really with every, you know, in years past, it would be an innovation that we would bring in for a two to three year cycle that really uh, remedies a problem on a specific job in that duration. But today, really, I think, you know, from those kind of, you know, short bursts of innovation, today we're putting strategy behind it. So it's allowing that two to three year innovation that we looked at initially for that job, allowing us to scale that, right, to maintain more of a five to 10 year vision. And then internally, that collaboration and communication has been fantastic. So everyone's aware in terms of what we are using. We're not doing you know, silo campaigns, we're not being redundant, uh, we're not waste, wasting our people's time, or in most cases, the uh, time of those startups, right? Because when they get on one job, they don't really know what is going to happen after that job ends, right? Yeah, I was going to ask you, I mean, in terms of, you know, what is the what is the biggest kind of obstacle that these innovation companies or these startups need to overcome with help from companies like yours? I mean, what is their their blind spot, if you would? Yeah, so great question. You know, I, I almost feel, and I feel really, um, I feel bad for any startup working in our state. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because I think with every group out there, every GC, they've got really the decision makers. They've got really the the, the jobs that really um, make sense for that startup. And sometimes, you know, I think as a startup, you really don't know who to talk to at a within a, a GC or a general contractor, right? In, in terms of who can bring you in, who can give you structure, who can scale you. And so that, you know, so they hit every project manager and every project superintendent that we have in our company in years past. And that really didn't get them anywhere. Again, they would get on one job and that would be it. And they couldn't scale. But today, having Diverge, having a process, they work with Diverge, right? Allowing us to kind of nurture them, put them in, putting them to the right resources, putting them on the right, right projects, and then allow them to actually go through a process, right? Where it has... There was no process. And again, it was very short term and it didn't give them a runway, allowing them to truly develop their products and really to give them any sustainability. So I think to your question, it is hard, I think, for any startup to understand within all the different um, you know, GCs who to work with, uh, who to scale, how to be sustainable. And I think with Diverge, what we're realizing is that you know a lot of what we do, obviously focusing, focusing internally for our people, first and foremost, uh, it's also helping the startups tremendously. Ty Newen of Hensel Phelps, thanks for joining us today and talking a little bit about your, your new venture. John, appreciate the opportunity and uh, have a great day. And thanks to our audience for joining us. This is John Caulfield from Building Design and Construction Magazine.